Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. Y'all kick off the shoes and you set a spell, all right? Now here's your host for the show, that old Kentucky boy himself, Mr. Bob Snap. Hi, guys, and welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. If you're seeing this message, I'm not here. I'm on the beach. Today in video, uh, I'm on, I did a couple in advance for you. And I did on something I thought was interesting. Something, someone that doesn't get talked about much. But um, Miss Harriet McGibbon, who played Mrs. Drysdale. And what about her? Let's hear, let's learn a little bit about her. Uh, just so you know, it's going to be a two-parter. Uh, I'm trying to make as many videos as I can ahead of time. Uh, so you guys can be uh, have something to watch while I'm gone so you don't forget about me. I know, how can you forget about a face like this? But, you know, well, take no chances. Here we go. Harriet McGibbon was a natural scene stealer, a skill she learned at an early age. She debuted on the professional stage at the age of 18 on Broadway and Beggar on Horseback, uh, starring Spring Byington. Uh, this early performance paved the way for McGibbon to gain more experience in the theater and such productions as Anniversary Waltz and the Ladies of the Corridor and the Front Page, all before she turned 30. Her favorite role was Mary, the mother of Jesus and the woman, uh, and the woman at the tomb. Uh, McGibbon was born on October 5th of 1905 in Chicago, Illinois, the only child of physician Dr. Walter P. McGibbon. She was a great-grandchild of Dr. Alicia Deming, an Indiana, Indiana physician who was active in the Underground Railroad movement that helped slaves flee to the North and during the Civil War. McGibbon's family settled in New York, a natural locale for her interest in theater to develop. Uh, she completed her education at Knox School in Cooperstown, New York, and her early ambition was to be an opera singer. She studied voice, piano, and harp, and planned to attend Vassar, but after appearing in a school play, she changed her mind. Harriet was an actress. Uh, besides her Broadway performance, Harriet appeared in many early television and radio dramas. She confined her professional activities mostly to New York until the late 50s. Her motion picture debut was in 1961 in Cry for Happy uh, with Donald O'Connor, uh, Joe Flynn, and Glenn Ford. Not long after, B. Benadere uh, suggested Harriet to Paul Henning as the right actress to play Granny's Thorn, Margaret Drysdale. Henning says he never regretted his choice. Harriet Elizabeth, as some of her friends and relatives called her, uh, was married twice. Her first marriage to William Reno Kane ended in divorce. They had one son, William McGibbon Kane. Her second marriage was to Charles Corwin White, who died in the mid-70s. Her son William became an art professor and taught at the University of Rhode Island until his death in 77. Her family says it was a crushing loss to Harriet. In order to stay busy after the end of the hillbillies, she continued her love of cooking. Uh, taking great pride in the cuisine. During her years on the Hillbillies as the brassy temperamental second wife of Milburn Drysdale, she guested on other TV shows such as Dr. Kildare, Hennessy, My Three Sons, The Dick Van Dyke Show, Bewitched, The Smothers Brothers, Dragnet, and The Ann Southern Show. She also appeared in motion pictures, a majority of one, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, uh, The Absent-Minded Professor, and Son of Flubber. There you go for part one. Uh, sounds like she got into a little bit of Disney there. Um, this woman is, is very interesting. And, and I hope you guys will share this out because I think people would be interested in knowing uh, about her life. Because you, know, you really think about it. She was one of the unsung heroes of the Clampett clan. Back for part two, uh, either tomorrow or the next day. So be prepared. Be looking for it. Have a great day. God bless. Be praying for you.